David Yankai from the LULAC Political Letter is back with us today. And before we get started on anything, we have a congratulations in order to you and LULAC for being named Best Blogger of the Year by Diamond City, the weekly publication. Congratulations, Thank Dave. you. That came as a surprise, but we're very happy to accept the honor. And it's getting more young people involved in reading our blog, so we appreciate Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Great honor. Well deserved. But today you're here to really talk about the presidential politics and what happened in Iowa. Well, what happened in Iowa was there was a snapshot of both political parties. I think what Iowa taught us is that for the first time in about 50 years, there will be a very conservative nominee for the Republican Party, and conversely for the Democratic Party, there will be a very liberal nominee. And when the general election comes, there's going to be a stark contrast of, of those two choices. Okay. Now, you're not very fond of the Iowa caucuses. Why, is, why is that? I'm not digging Iowa. Okay, here's the thing. There are 55 million Republicans in the United States. The people in Iowa, there were 180,000 voters who basically recommended a choice to those 55 million Republicans. Same thing with Democrats. 72 million Democrats, 171,000 Democrats in Iowa made, the, made their recommendation choices. What bothers me about Iowa is it's not a real election, it's a caucus. You have sure. to stand in a room with people. And you know, in two elections in 1972 and 1976, undecided won. So, you know, over the two people who actually won, George McGovern sure. and Jimmy Carter. So I'm not digging Iowa. No. So. All right. Well, what about New Hampshire? Is that going to be New like Iowa? No. New Hampshire <laughs> is going to be historically different. The only, the only similarity between New Hampshire and Iowa is that New Hampshire is first. What you're going to see is you're going to see um, the New Hampshire, uh, well, there, there's not really a difference between the two of them, but what you're going to see with New Hampshire is New Hampshire is going to be a real election, uh, there's going to be poll workers, and it's not going to be a caucus thing. So it's going to be more of what you're going to see in the rest of the election. Okay, and on the Republican side, there seems to be a three-person race. Uh, Rubio, Trump, and Cruz, do you think there's another person who can make it a four-way race? Yes, that's going to happen. I believe there's three people, John Kasich, uh, Jeb Bush, and Chris Christie. I have a feeling that it's going to be John Kasich who's going to create that third, that fourth lane, and uh, and he and he will be almost like the moderate of the three conservatives that are running. Okay, good to know. And our state primary is in late April. Will we have much of a say, do you think? We're not going to know that until the primaries in the South, which are going to be in the early part of March, and then we'll get a better indication. Okay, and Dave, before we go, you know I have to ask, loving the tie today. The tie, <laughs> right. We have uh, we have Lincoln's birthday, we have uh, the Super Bowl, we have, um, we have uh, you know, the, the 29th of the day, the extra day, but this is a day for Valentine's Day. All you need is love. Valentine's Day, what, what, what better month to celebrate There it you in? go. There's a method, to, always a method to the madness, Yes, right? ma'am. And Dave, if folks want to check out the LULAC Political Letter, where can they go? LULACpoliticalletter.blogspot.com. Wonderful. David Yankai, thank you so much for joining us today.